This week on SAR Trail, we deviate from our usual overlanding to join the Black Sheep Hummer Squadron Rally in Moab, Utah. We met up in town in the morning and got to check out each other's rigs. And yes, even a few Jeeps joined us. There were Hummers from California, Missouri, Michigan, Arizona, just to name a few states. And of course, a bright orange one from Colorado. After a quick first day meeting for some introductions and instructions, it was time to head to the top of the world trailhead. Today we're doing something really cool. We've been wanting to meet up with the Black Sheep Hummer Squadron for a really long time. It's a whole week event. Unfortunately, we can't do the whole week. We have other commitments that are gonna keep us from hanging out in Moab for the week doing trails, which we're bummed about. But hopefully next year, we'll be in for the entire week. So we don't have the rooftop tent on, we don't have the awning on, we don't have any water, propane, firewood, a little bit of firewood. We don't have the scottle up there. We, we are going with a lower weight distribution on our H3 because we're going to tackle some, well, we're doing one trail today. We're doing top of the world trail, which isn't super crazy hard, but we wanted to hit this trail with this group without all the weight on the roof. Everybody's kind of going with a more off-road, not overlanding setup for this, for this uh, outing. The guys in this group, the ones that organize it, the men and the women that organize it, so nice, so friendly, so welcoming for us. This is our first time, and most of the people that are out here have done this a couple times. Um, they, from VDOG1115, our buddy from California, is here. He's driving right in front of us. So it's going to be a great time. We've already made new friends. We're going to make some more new friends. We're going to show you some crazy, awesome H3s. And we're going to be showing you some other rigs too, because it's not just for Hummers. There's a bunch of other rigs. There's some Jeeps in here. There's some super cool vehicles. I think, well, we're not the most tame no. setup, but we're right there hanging that plane. As far as trail cred, we're kind of at the bottom with this group. But we're going to show you BB's uh, long travel, independent front suspension, Hummer H3. This thing is killer. It's what we would love to do to our H3. I don't know if that's going to be the direction we go, but I, we're going to show you this thing. It is amazing. It's been written up at a bunch of forums. It's been on four wheel, four by four magazines, and we got a couple of solid axle swap front front solid axle swap H3s that are out here as well too, an H3T, and what looks like a crazy modified H1, maybe an old Humvee or H1. I don't know. I don't know what that yellow thing is, Looks but like it's it amazing. Go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You guys are gonna see awesome rigs. There's a huge convoy in front of us. We're pulling up the rear. So here we go, guys. It's gonna be awesome. Once we got off of pavement, we took a little time to air down our tires and take one final check over our rigs. We have said it before, the trails in Moab are amazing, not just in their challenges, but in the beauty of their surroundings. We travel to Moab several times a year, spending several weeks camping on her trails, and we never get tired of the views. It's no wonder that Moab is the ultimate destination for off-road 4x4s in America.
Hummers in general are underrated and overlooked as trail or overlanding vehicles. I guess that reputation is in part due to the high percentage of them that have never been off-road. Most of them have spent their lives on paved streets bouncing between malls and restaurants. But don't let that fool you. Hummers can mob with the best of them. You have seen us overlanding with this H3 before, when we met up with Vey and his family for some amazing camping days in Moab just a few months ago. Pretty soon, he will be converting his H3 to a solid front axle and a spring over axle in the rear. It's going to be a game changer with some incredible wheel travel and 40 inch tires. Okay, so this is Alex. He, you're like the instigator, right? I guess I am the instigator. Yes. <laughs> this is really cool. So, how many years have you been doing the black sheep? Uh, well, actually, the it, black sheep was started by Neo and BB and others before me. Okay. So I joined them in late 2008. I think they started around 2006. Okay. Awesome. I mean, we've been aware of this rally for a couple of years at least, okay. but certainly not dating that back that right. far. So, how many times have you done Top of the World? Uh, Top of the World. This would be my fourth I think I believe nice. over the years nice it's a little far from town so we don't get out here as often right right very cool um, so what else what are we looking for are we gonna take a break up at the top a little yep bit? there's a we're gonna have lunch up top there's a wonderful uh, overlook 
Uh, it's a great park, nice parking spot, so incredible scenes. That's the whole reason the scenery to do this trail isn't just the wheeling, but the destination of top of the world. And I think we have, what, a 2,000 foot drop it there, right? It's scary, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get within about 10 feet of the ledge. Are, are we going to take the iconic photos up there, up that little I think that's piece? a great idea. Are you, you going to go first? <laughs> no, I do mine on seven mile rim. That's where I get my iconic photos. <laughs> All right, yeah. cool. Unless my legs start shaking. Yep. <laughs> So we're taking a little break here, stretching the legs, but so far been a really good trail. And I gotta say, man, it's a great group of people and it's just teamwork after teamwork. Fantastic, yeah, I'm glad to see everyone's caught up and uh, it seems like everyone's going well. Yeah, so far so good. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> If you hear someone clearing their throat and breathing heavy, that's Natalie hiking up and down the trails, breathing in a lot of dust. She had the impossible task of trying to video all of these 4x4s and not get left behind.
Our lead 4x4 was this side-by-side. -side. This obstacle was a tough challenge for its narrow wheelbase, but with a little help, it pulled up just fine. While we were going over this obstacle, you will see Vey off in the distance. He inadvertently took the route that the side-by-side -side took. It's supposed to be a bypass, but it's really not any easier. He turned around, so he's pretty good. No, he's still coming up. Things get a little interesting when Vey gets to the steep part of the bypass. You'll hear what I'm talking about. I'm coming up over here. I'm like, where the hell is he coming from? <laughs> Ooh, wow. Something is broke. Okay, so we got to one of the, well, we weren't even really on the major obstacle, but Vey took kind of like and accidentally took a bypass, which turns out to be a really difficult section. And you can see how steep it is right here. There's a couple rock shelves. And he was coming up. So the shock plate, the shock mount, broke as he was coming up this steep section causing his axle and of course the wheel over here to go forward popped off the fender so he's broken down right now he's calling into moab now to see if we can find another shock plate and get him off of this trail i think we got a way to get him off just some of the guys have come up with some creative ideas to pull the axle back hold it in place using his winch and some straps but right now we're all just going to hold tight and uh see what happens hey what did you find out Oh gosh. All right, so O'Reilly's is going to take a week to get the part here. That's not going to work out. So we got to find fabrication now. Fabrication bay. With a breakdown like this, it's a huge blessing to have a team of guys that can diagnose the problem and come up with a plan on the fly. This will not be a quick fix, especially when you're a long way away from the nearest Hummer parts store. The one piece one, why didn't you put it on? Oh, yeah. So, it, it is my fault. I do have that other one. I got mine too. So All right, Steve. It, it was moving. It's moving. Mm -hmm. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. You got another inch and a quarter. Oh, maybe it was an inch and a half. Can I take him all the way off? He's just pulling the shock off. Right oh, okay. Now. Yeah. I thought he was working on the. How was it? Get this off here? 
All right, Bay, so tell us what happened and where we're at right now. Well, we're halfway through the top of the world and uh, the leaf spring plate broke in half. So the, the guy's gonna re-weld it, they're gonna bring it to me in the morning, and then have another friend bringing replacements in the afternoon. So I'll be camping here tonight. So we've done it before. We've broken down on trails and spent the night right on a trail. So you're in good company. Oh man, we hate leaving you out here. We got to get back to Colorado, but I know you're covered with some really good people. So, yeah, awesome, buddy. Good seeing right. you again. Thanks for staying out. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, so you're good to go. Okay, start coming. Just like that. Come a little more. Good. Keep coming, you're good. Keep coming. Okay, it's gonna drop, so go slow. There you go. Keep coming, you're good. You're good. All right, you're dropping. All right, you're good. All right, you got one more drop in the back. Slow, slow, slow. All right, you're down. Yeah, go, go straight, and then as soon as you drop, I would cut slightly passenger that way because the both tires will be on the same level. See how there's like a step? Start cutting passenger. Not, not that hard. Yeah, just a little. Okay, come on slow, you're gonna drop. Drop here first. 
All right, you need more passenger. Okay, sure. more passenger. Okay, now you're gonna drop. Go slow. Are you straight up? Okay, now you're gonna drop. Go slow. Are right, you straighten up? You can go straight because. You think straight? Now, now it's another step down. Um, but he should go straighten his tires, right? Yeah. Yeah, at this point, I would straighten out. All right, straighten out. Is that driver? Yeah, driver. Slow. Real slow. Yep. Uh, the other one's not down. All right, okay. you're down on that side. Now you're going to drop passenger. Yeah, cut passenger. So cut passenger and go slow. Slow, 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 slow. Uh, perfect. Okay. Nothing touched. Okay, so I'll give you an update on where the first day of this rally has ended up. Vay is camping back out on the trail to stay with his H3. If not, you never know what's gonna happen. You know, you come back the next day and your light bar is gone and his Wii Boost antenna is gone and you know, who knows what happens. Anything could happen overnight when you're away from your vehicle out in the middle of nowhere. So he's gonna spend the night there, but he's good. The other guys that have put together this rally have been doing it for years, have taken his shock mount plate and they've taken it into town. They're gonna to get it welded to get him off of the trail tomorrow. So they're gonna come back on this same trail and get him taken care of and get him down. Then he has another friend showing up with two new shock mounting plates to change out both sides in the event that the other side has a weakness as well. And then, so that way they'll both be level because one is an aftermarket, one is factory. So he's gonna go with two new factory ones and that way he can hopefully spend the rest of the week here hitting trails with the rest of the crew. I gotta say, super, super great, great group of men and women and children. I mean, everybody was really friendly, really nice. And when Bay's rig broke down, everybody was willing to help. And thankfully there's some guys there that are really skilled at taking care of stuff like that. And they've been doing these kind of rallies since I think 2006. Um, at least 2008 that we're aware of so guys that know what they're doing they know h3s really well they know how to take care of stuff and have the right tools and everybody kind of joined in together so that was super cool we have to get off of this trail it's getting late now i don't know what, what time is it baby i don't know it's probably five five o'clock maybe we still got to get off of this trail which is probably going to take an hour at least and we got to get into moab air up fuel up and then we got to get over we got to get back to Colorado tonight. We're probably not going to get in until sometime tomorrow morning, but yeah, for sure. it is what it is. Uh, so we didn't make it to the top. A lot of people went up to the top and then came back around and checked on everybody else that were at the, the repair site. So they got to get up there, but we just decided, you know what? I don't know if you can hear the noise. I'm sure you heard it on the video when we've passed by. I think they just diagnosed a loose steering rack for us. So we got to get that taken care of before our next trip but right now i think we're down at the we're past the worst of the trail so hope so pretty not not easy but it's easier easier <laughs> going down by ourselves. I think there's one more H3 behind us. He stopped longer over at the top of the world turning around point, the, the, the view location. So he's somewhere back there. Everybody else is way down the trail. We wanted to hang with Bay for a little bit before we said goodbye to him. We're not going to see him for quite a while. I'm not sure when we will again when we can hook up. But this is how we normally do trails. 
out by ourselves and alone. So it's been great being with the group, but this is this is really what we're used to. So just taking our time, going slow, and especially since the steering rack is making noise. Shh, don't tell Natalie. It'll be fine. Trail. We're on kind of the, we'll call it the service trail that gets you to the trailhead. A lot smoother. We're able to pick the pace up a little bit, which is good. I, I tell you, we were just talking, and and Natalie and I were both like, "Did we start this trail today? Or was that yesterday?" <laughs> it seems like we started this yesterday. Camped out at the site where Bay is still broken down. Actually, going to camp out tonight. It feels like a second day. This has a, been a very long time. And this is an unusual thing for us as of the past couple of years is doing an out and back trail because you know typically we are getting on a really long trail and then camping on that trail and then continuing that trail the next day and so on and so on. Um, but this one has a couple campsites on the trail, but basically it's a it's a four by four out to an incredible overlook, which we didn't get to see. And then you come on back and, you know, kind of just a four by four, not necessarily an overland in the camping trail, though you could make it into that. But I'm glad to be on a little bit smoother road. I'll be glad to get this thing aired up. I think I'm gonna crawl underneath it and see if I can tighten up the steering rack before we have to make the long drive tonight and get back home. So we'll see. I'm not sure. I don't really want to. <laughs> I'm tired. But I don't want the steering rack falling off on the way home. So we need to check it out and see if we can get something tightened up. At least buy us a little more time till we can really get it fixed uh, Monday or Tuesday this coming week. So, you ready to find some smoother road, baby? Yes. Bailey, you watching us on Gaia? Yeah. How are we doing? Yeah. How far are we? Pretty close? Yeah, we're going to the road. Yes. We made it off the trail, which is good. We are down in Moab at the City Market grocery store wanted to get some place that was a little more clean and level because I didn't think we were going to have uh, a huge problem getting down the tra trail. So the steering column has one aluminum collar that is a little bit loose, but I don't think that's our problem. Up under here, I did found some linkage for the sway bar that's completely loose, and I think that might be all that chatter we've been hearing. So let's take a look in here and see. Okay, so here is sway bar up here. Here's the linkage down here. and really loose right here by the the um well that's i don't know about that either but right here by the lower control arm so i'm going to tighten that guy up hopefully that's the noise we were hearing all that chatter on the trail so we're going to have to see but let's go ahead and get it taken care of and see all right shameless plug we are an affiliate for tech and tools and we always carry them with us and honestly we haven't used them that much but we did today and we tightened up the sway bar linkage somewhat. The stuff is stripped out, so I could only get it so tight before it started just, you know, free turning again. So it's tighter than it was. I think the steering rack is slightly a little bit loose, but it should be completely fine to get us where we need to go. 
and then when we can really take this thing all apart, we'll get the steering rack tightened up. It's just one upper bolt on an aluminum collar. I don't think it's really a, a big issue for us right now. Tecton Tools, here, you can hold this one, baby. Tecton Tools, really great tools, an awesome guarantee. If you break one of these, just take a picture of what's broken and they will send you a replacement back, which is really cool. That's why we ended up with them. There's a link in our description. <clears throat> There's a link in the description below this video, and then there is a link in our homepage as well. So if you're looking for really cool tools, you might want to check them out. We had a great time at the Black Sheep Hummer Squadron Rally. Thank you all for an awesome day. We can't wait till next year when we can stay for the whole week.